it is exactly one. Okay, cool. Then, uh, then let's start. Hi, Linda. You're uh, the Instagram Hi. takeover today. Could you uh, please tell us what you're doing over there? Uh, I am doing everything that I can think of, basically. I think I'm uh, more or less like rather doing too much than too little because I was like, I have a day to uh, to do this Instagram takeover. So what can I do? And then I thought I can share practice routines and songwriting and we can talk about quarantine life and we can talk about like concepts behind your music and I would like to ask people questions or that people can ask me questions uh, and I could go live at some point and could show some new releases of mine and then I was like I'm actually I'm, I have having too much ideas many okay. ideas right now so <laughs> Oh, that's great. So one day almost feels like too little. Actually, yes. Um, I, I don't know if people are going to actually look at all the stories because right now I, <laughs> uh, I already posted a lot, but um, yeah. Uh, that, that's great. It's, it's nice with content. So can you tell us about some of the stuff you've posted already? Um, I started... Um, with showing uh, everyone the instruments that I have right now, which is one acoustic guitar and acoustic piano and a violin. Yeah. And then um, I showed, I quickly showed some CDs that were lying around. And I uh, linked people to some inspirations of mine that people may not know. Um, and I shared some practice routines and I uh, mm -hmm. asked some uh, stuff I shared some uh, thoughts of mine about uh, structuring my day because it's something I am trying to improve because I was struggling with it and I thought maybe that could help other people uh, that are struggling with it. Um, so I shared that it helped for me to write stuff down and to organize my, my myself. And I asked, I was curious about whether people are... Uh, having a routine too much of a routine and getting bored because mm. of that or if people actually don't have a routine and struggling with that like what's the bigger issue yeah so so you aim to maybe inspire and help out not as much as just showcasing your own stuff you're 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 trying to uh, to help people who are struggling with finding structure and motivation maybe yeah um and i i mean i'm struggling with it myself too and i think it's nice if we can get something meaningful out of today like if everyone can uh, can be inspired by tomorrow or can have loads of new ideas about how to make use of this time or you know just yeah yeah that's really great where are you right now where are you uh, streaming from I am in the Netherlands, uh, in a little village uh, near Schiphol, actually, called Rijnstadsrewoude, and it's my parents' place. Okay. Okay, nice. And uh, how's the situation there? Uh, like the laws and res restrictions are the same as in Denmark? or? I think so, more or less. I mean, some shops are open, some are not. Uh, luckily, we can still go outside, but we really have to keep our one and a half meter distance. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, we cannot visit each other with more than three people at a time. Um, okay. And when I am meeting friends right now, it is in the garden at one and a half meter distance, and I'm not taking public transport anymore. Um, I'm taking... Uh, me, I, I myself am taking uh, a lot, quite a lot of precautions, I think, because I have two grands who are almost 90 years old and we are visiting them regularly. So um, yeah. I can't, like, I can't, I'm not scared for myself to get the disease, but I can't get it because I don't want my family to get it, especially of not course. my grandma. Yeah. Yeah. And what can we, uh, you talked about violins and guitars and, uh, what can we expect from you the next couple of, or actually the rest of the day? Um, if 
first of all, uh, if anyone wants something, uh, wants to know something from me, uh, everyone is welcome to ask uh, anything. Uh, what I would be maybe be interested in talking about is um, near releases of mine, um, composing, uh, being, uh, finding focus or balancing focus and versatility being a multi-instrumentalist, um, organizing events, the, that whole thing, um, effort yeah. groups. Uh, obviously, I was just beginning to organize stuff in Oddball before I left and um, having concerts and maybe the concept behind your music because people really underestimate how difficult that actually is. And I got some insights of, on that uh, last week, which is great. Yeah or uh, quarantine opportunities. Um, of course. And, and you did work on the Afro Groove Jam at Café Fleuse uh, just before the quarantine. I, I believe you had two jams, right? Yeah, I had, um, well, I had one South American evening just as a little tryout on the 7th of uh, February. And then yeah. one month later, I had the first proper Afro Grooves Jam that I, I actually put together the band as well and uh, asked dancers and that was like there was a slightly bigger thing yeah yeah okay and and you're aiming to to keep that alive on the other side of all this uh, it would be great to uh, continue organizing that and um, I am just very grateful that I'm, I'm so glad that uh, I already plan to keep my keep my room until the end of July so that I actually mm. have a chance to come back yeah, I can see Lucas, he's sharing some pictures from the Afro Groove night with the dancers and, and everything. Can, can you tell us about your thought process about organizing uh, more than a concert or uh, an event? Um, well, it's basically started with um, me missing the session back home because I was part of Afro Grooves in um, the Netherlands as well. And uh, last year I actually did an internship uh, organ booking acts and uh, being stage manager at a concert hall. So I already knew a little bit about organizing. And then um, I just uh, I just thought I want to try and bring this to Alba and uh, see if it works. So um, yeah. then I just uh, put together a band and I was also at the same time, um, I was uh, just be joining uh, rehearsals with Fimoros because I miss dancing too. So I was dancing at Nordkraft, trying to dance at Nordkraft uh, on Sunday sometimes. And yeah. I knew Fimoros and I thought it could be fun to uh, incorporate so, uh, them. In Fimoros, this. they are, Fimoros, they are, uh, can you tell a little about it for people who don't know what they are? Yeah, sorry. Uh, Fimoros is an African German dance group. Um, and they are uh, doing it for fun, um, yeah. but they rehearse at Nordkraft every Sunday from two to five, actually, so it's quite a long time. And they have live percussion, they're dancing to live percussion, which is a very cool experience. And uh, I felt like dancing is always a great way to, um, to draw attention to something spectacle. Live percussion is very exciting to have them perform. And they actually, we found out that they, I, only perform at the carnival every year pretty much and maybe some yeah. two or three other parades um same as poco loco this is what you're seeing here poco loco is the samba group in alba so that's uh, brazilian that's a little different but uh we still i i thought it would be fun to invite them too because uh, yeah. yeah they're also very the rehearsing very hard and they're very good um and they nice. actually just uh, went to Rio before the effort group, so they were very in the mood already. Yeah. Great. And, and you dance as well. You, you talk about dancing. Is that one of the things you do right now to keep, keep up the spirit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I love um, 
especially in the evening when I have some physical energy left or if I have practiced. I, I did that at the conservatory as well when I practice uh, for when I sit for a long time practicing and then I feel my shoulders are a bit stiff and stuff like that. I just dance even for five minutes. It's so yeah. great to refresh the brain and to kind of loosen up. Um, but I've also I have danced for quite a long time sometimes when I feel inspired I just do a lot of takes and make some kind of video and it's always improvisation and uh, it's very relaxing because I'm not a professional dancer so it's not this I don't put the same pressure on myself as I do when for example when it's about my music or it's the same actually with violin because violin is also my hobby instrument which mm. is why actually people I, I think one of the reasons why people like my violin videos is just because I'm they can see I having I'm having fun I don't I'm not taking this too seriously and it's kind of yeah and the same with yeah. dancing I post these videos just because I think it's fun it's fun you know yeah. I'm happy when I'm dancing so I hope to make people happy <laughs> and you you post these videos to your Instagram right yes and to Facebook and to Facebook okay so so people watching this are able to find them over there yes definitely I yeah. uh, just did one uh, where I was improvising to uh, Anomaly which is uh, it's all kind of all coming together because I'm a keyboard like obviously a piano player and then I'm dancing to another piano player which I saw live so it's like everything is <laughs> coming together I'm coming together That's really nice. We are looking forward to seeing more from you over on the Instagram page. Uh, to everybody watching, you can go find uh, Linda all day over at Just Need Tools on Instagram. And uh, thank you so much for participating. We're really looking forward to seeing seeing what you're up to. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's been great fun experimenting with this. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye.